This is the IBM 1401 from 1960s. I was, oh, about seven years old when this machine came out. But the nice thing about it is it's very well packaged. If you can figure out how to open it, you're... This was done with IBM's SMS technology. It was their first solid state machine. Uh, let's see what we have here. This happens to be What have I done? I've taken cards out, but uh, this is one of the printer gates. This drives the 1403. The 1403 is, the, is the printer associated with the 1401? You're very, uh, said it was a very modular machine. This is probably the, the worst part of the whole operation is trying to put this shroud back on because it's uh, there's two grooves at the bottom that it can go into. And then it's got a hook and these little clips at the top. And then this can just go back. It's not simple to take a card out, put it back in, and work on the machine. Again, these are all these are SMS backplanes, all with discrete wire. This is really before they had a lot of the uh, complex wiring they have today. So, usually the yellow wires are original, and the red wires are ECs. Something was changed along the way. can focus here along with not only containing the logic but put some of the power supplies in the same packaging to supply the, the voltages the various voltage voltages required for the SMS technology we also put a convenience outlet here so you can plug in your test equipment so you can make sure this thing's working correctly and somebody's At the time, they were looking at two to three thousand. They ended up selling ten, which is a lot of hardware to replicate. And as uh, it pointed out, that that was the reason Universal Instruments got into the assembly process because to put these cards together, to put the number of cards each each machine has um, hundreds of SMS cards, and to assemble them, they needed some way to automatically place the components and solder the components, because that would have been a lot of work to do every card by hand. So it drove some other innovations within this area, just to get that done. And they're still they're doing that today, you know, assembling and soldering cards. So it's really been quite the, it was quite the endeavor. I mean, prior to that, uh, all the vacuum tube and all the mechanical stuff was pretty much done by hand. This allowed some degree of automation and allowed IBM to expand its business uh, through, the, through the later systems, IBM 360 being the next machine to take off. So it was a very important concept. It's taken us five years to get this far. We have the processor working. The printer working, as you've already seen. We have the reader punch working, and we're now working on the tape drives. So, I mean, it's it's been a bit of a challenge. The, the nice thing about the SMS is you can work on it. You can see the transistors. You can replace the transistors. Uh, we've had a couple of diodes that were cracked, but that's about all that can go wrong there. Um, it's been really just a matter of becoming familiar with the technology and becoming familiar with the logic and having Bill program everything that we could possibly ask for, which has always been good. So, so our next step is to work on the tape drive, which at the moment uh, uh, won't load tape.
I mean, it was solid state technology. However, along with that, IBM in integrated a lot of their mechanical pieces and parts, relays, clutches, motors, hydraulics. If you're interested in working on any of those, this is, uh, this is a machine to work on. <laughs> you get into everything.